Kai, I say, I've seen a lighting like this on his face before, but this time it keeps coming, growing brighter as he returns to us. I did not reach thee, but my feet slip near every day, three rivers and a hill to cross, one desert and a sea. I shall not count the journey one when I am telling thee. Kai and I took the journey in our own order. We began with the hill together. We crossed the desert to get to the carving and the streams and the rivers inside the canyons against when we came out. There has been no sea, no ocean, but there has been a great expanse for both of us to navigate without the other. I think that counts. And I think looking at him that the poem is wrong. He will count this journey and so will I. Anna comes in later and hands me several more cures from Alexander. He says it will take more than one dose. She whispers, this is all he could manage for now. He says to give the next dose as soon as possible. I nod, thank you, I say. And she slips back out the door, nodding to the medics as she goes. They're conducting their morning rounds. One of the village medics turns Kai from his side to his back to change the area of pressure on Kai's body. He's looking better, the medic says, sounding surprised. I think so too, I say. And right then we hear something outside. I turn to the window and through it I see the guards are bringing Hunter and Xander out of the village circle. Hunter, Xander. They both walk on their own to stand in front of the voting troughs. But their hands are tied and they are flanked by guards. I wish I could see Xander's eyes from here. All I can see is the way he walks and how tired he seems. He's been up all night making cures. It's time for the vote, says the other medics. I open the window and the others say, so we can hear. For a split second, they are both engaged with the pushing open the window and that's when I empty the syringe into Kai's line. When I finish slipping the evidence into my sleeve, I glance up to find one of the medics watching me. I can, can't tell what he saw, but I don't miss feet. Xander would be proud. Why are they having the trial so soon, I ask. Colin and Lena must feel that they're gathering enough evidence, and the medics say. He looks at me for a second longer, and as the morning smell of fresh air and the window rush in, Kai takes a deep breath. His lungs sound better. He's not all the way back yet, but he's coming. I can tell. I feel him more than I did before. I know he listens even if he can't yet speak. People fill the village circle. I'm not close enough to see the stones in their hands, but I hear Colin call out, Is there anyone here who will stand with Hunter? I will, Anna says. The rules are that you may only stand with one person, the medic tells me, and I understand what he's saying. If Anna stands with Hunter, she can't stand with Xander. Anna nods. She walks up to the front and faces out to the crowd. As she speaks, I notice them drawing closer to her. What Hunter did was wrong, Anna says, but he didn't mean to kill. That was his intent. He could have done it easily and escaped. What Hunter wanted was to make things fair. He felt since the Providence denies anomalous access to any of their medications for years, we should do the same with their patients. Anna doesn't play on the crowd. She says the facts and lets the crowd weigh in. Of course, we all know that the world isn't fair, but we all understand how it feels to wish that it were. Many of these people know too well what it is like to be tossed aside or worse sent out to die by the society. Anna says nothing for all the losses Hunter has suffered that would have led him to this point. She doesn't have to. They're written on his arms and his eyes. I know you are required more, Anna says, but I asked for exile for Hunter. The lesser of the two senses. Will the crowd give it? They do. They drop their stones in the trough near Anna's feet instead of the one near Collins. Farmers come with their buckets and pour water. The decision holds. Hunter, Colin says, you may leave now. Hunter nods. I can't tell if he feels anything. Someone hands him a pack and there's a disturbance. Eli, as Eli comes running for Hunter, wrapping his arms around Hunter to say goodbye. 
and I embrace them both for a moment. They are a little family, three generations connected, not by blood, but by the journeys and farewells. Then Eli steps back. He will stay with Anna, who must remain with the rest of her people. Hunter walks straight into the forest, not taking the path, not looking back. Where will he go? To the carving? And now the crowd murmurs and Xander comes forward. In that moment, I realize that the people have sent their mercy on Hunter. They live and work with him for the past few months. They knew his story, but they do not know Xander. He stands in front of the village stone alone. Xander will do anything for the, those he loves, whatever the cost. But looking at Xander now, I think the cost has become too high. He looks like Hunter, I realize, like someone who has been driven too far to see too much. Hunter has kept himself together long enough to deliver Eli safely to the mountains. For a long time, he did what he had to do to help others, but then he broke. I can't let that happen to Xander.